Before you begin the assembly process, sort your inventory, lay each wood part and hardwood component on the ground. Take a few minutes to cross-reference each one with the list in the assembly manual. Remember, we're always here to help. Contact us if you find a part that is damaged or missing. Take a moment to record the carton ID stamp that appears on the end of each box you receive. Note the first five numbers of the stamped code and the letter at the end. Record them on page 11 of your assembly manual. In step 2, make sure you're working on a flat, solid, and raised surface. Place a pair of rail TBs on the surface so that the grooved sides are facing up. Measure 3 inches from each end and mark the spots with a pencil. Now position 3 balusters between the rail TBs. Take a moment to align the outside edge of each baluster with the pencil marks. To prevent cracking, pre-drill through the outer rail TBs. Then attach each outer baluster with one wood screw at each end. Use a measuring tape to center the middle baluster. When it's in position, pre-drill through the rail TB at each end and attach with two wood screws. Repeat to create seven more baluster assemblies. It's best to continue working on a raised surface that is flat and solid for part two of step two. Place a baluster assembly between a panel post and a corner panel post. Make sure the inserts are positioned on the inside. Slide the bottom rail TB into place so that it's tight to the top of the insert in each post. When the boards are in position, attach with 12 wood screws. Check to make sure the unit is square and make any adjustments as required. Position a top horizontal between the panel post and corner panel post so that it fits into the grooves. Use a measuring tape to position the bottom edge of the top horizontal exactly 14 inches from the top of the panel post. Attach it with three wood screws per side. Perform all of step three on a flat, raised surface. Measure the two posts at the bottom of a post panel to identify the wider one, which is the panel post. Position a room L mount on the inside of the panel post and make sure it's flush to the bottom. Attach it with a pan screw. Repeat to attach a room L mount to each post panel assembly. Once again, working on a flat, raised surface, position a post panel assembly onto a corner post. Make sure it's flush at the top and bottom. It really helps to keep the boards aligned if you insert bolts temporarily into the holes at the top of the corner panel post. When you're sure the ends are flush, attach the post panel assembly to the corner post with three wood screws through the pre-drilled holes. Next, pre-drill a hole on a slight angle roughly centered between the top and bottom of the baluster assembly. Insert a screw on an angle to secure the assembly. Next, lay the assembly down flat and position the edge of a second post panel assembly over the corner post, once again making sure the tops and bottoms are flush. Insert temporary bolts again to help keep the boards aligned. Attach the post panel assembly to the corner post with four wood screws in exactly the way you attached the first one. Continue to work on a flat surface for this part. Position a room L mount on the inside of a corner panel post so that it's flush to the bottom. Attach it with a pan screw. Attach a room L mount to the other corner panel post in the same manner to complete the corner post assembly. Step 4 should be completed on a flat, solid, and raised surface. Measure 10 and a half inches down from the angled tip of a beam end and make a mark. Now position a beam end 10 and a half on the side without the cutout so that the end is flush with the beam end. Make sure it's square and centered over the holes in the beam end. Then attach with three wood screws. 
Repeat to make a second beam end assembly with the beam end 10 and a half on the side without the cutout. Then make two more beam end assemblies, this time on the side with the cutout, so that you'll have two of each. Working on a flat solid and raised surface, insert T-nuts into the four holes on one end of a front beam. Flip it over and place a second front beam on top so that the cutouts interlock. Attach loosely with four hex bolts. Have a second person check the alignment of the boards from one end. When the boards are straight, tighten the bolts. Next measure 52 inches from one end of the assembly and make a mark. That's where you'll position the end of a splice with the long end facing down. Pre-drill through the two countersunk holes on the splice, then insert lag screws. Make sure the splice is flush with the edge of the front beam, then insert four wood screws. Attach a second splice to the other side of the front beam assembly in the same manner. Then repeat each step to create a second front beam assembly. Next, lay one of the assemblies on its side and place a plaque over top of the T-nuts. Make sure the short side of the plaque is on the bottom. That's the side of each front beam with large bolt holes on it. Attach the plaque with four wood screws. In step six, it's critical to get the placement of the corner post assemblies just right. Refer to the diagram on page 19 of your assembly manual as needed. Move the four corner post assemblies into place in the final location of your pergola, forming a rectangle with the four corner posts on the outside. It should measure 12 feet from the outside of each corner post along the front and back. Adjust the placement of the assemblies as needed. Along the sides, it should measure exactly 8 feet from the outside of each corner post. Once again, make any necessary adjustments. Positioned correctly, it should measure 13 feet 9 and a half inches diagonally between posts. Ladder placement is important in step 7. Begin by positioning two ladders along one of the shorter sides of the pergola. Each ladder should be directly in front of a corner post assembly. Insert T-nuts on the inside of each panel post and corner panel post. Now place a beam end assembly on the outside so that it's flush to the top of the corner post and panel post. In the correct position, the edge of the beam end 10 and a half should line up with the outside edge of the corner post. Attach the beam end assembly loosely to the corner post with a 1 quarter by 5 inch hex bolt. Then repeat to install a second beam end assembly on the other corner post assembly along the short side. With some assistance, position a beam 57 and a half so that it extends between the interlocking cutouts of each beam end assembly. Attach it to the beam end assembly and panel post on each side loosely with a hex bolt. Check to make sure the beam 57 and a half is level and also square to each of the corner post assemblies. Tighten the bolts, then fasten each beam end assembly using three wood screws. Repeat each step to install beam end assemblies and a beam 57 and a half on the other short side. Set up your ladders on the long side of the pergola that you would consider the front. With some assistance, lift the front beam assembly with the plaque into place against the top of the corner post assemblies. Make sure the plaque is facing out and the top of the front beam assembly is flush to the top of the posts. Then attach the front beam assembly to each corner post and corner panel post loosely with one hex bolt. Once you have confirmed the structure is level and square, tighten the bolts. Then secure the front beam assembly to the corner panel posts and panel posts with six wood screws. Repeat to install the second front beam assembly on the other long side of the pergola. When you're done, get some help to remeasure the structure, adjusting the corner post assemblies as necessary. The opening on the bar side should measure four feet six and a half inches.
perform step eight on a raised surface that is flat and solid. Hammer four T-nuts into the outside holes on the notched end of an inner beam. Flip the inner beam over, then connect it end to end with a second inner beam so that the cutouts interlock. Attach loosely with four hex bolts. Then get someone to check the alignment from one end of the beam assembly. When it's straight, tighten the bolts. Next measure 52 inches down one side of the beam assembly and make a mark. That's where you'll position the end of a splice with the long side facing down. Pre-drill through the countersunk holes. Then attach the splice with two lag screws and four wood screws. Flip the assembly over and install a splice on the other side in the same manner. Then repeat those steps to create a second inner beam assembly. You'll need two ladders and two people for step nine. Before you begin, position the ladders at each side of the pergola, right next to the front corner post assemblies. With some assistance, lift an inner beam assembly into place so that each end is flush to a beam end assembly and to the top of the panel posts. Attach it at each end with three wood screws through the pilot holes on the outside of the inner beam assembly. Take a moment to make sure the inner beam assembly is level, then position a beam 20 and 3 quarters between the front beam assembly and inner beam assembly so that it's tight to the outside of the panel post and centered over the pilot holes. Make sure it's flush at the top, then attach with six wood screws. Use one wood screw to attach the panel post to the beam 20 and 3 quarters and to the inner beam assembly. Install a second beam 20 and 3 quarters in the same manner. Then repeat each step to install an inner beam assembly and two beam 20 and 3 quarters on the other long side. When you're done, check to see that all the beams are level and square to the posts. From inside the pergola, position an arch gusset left so that the top end is tight to the side of the beam 57 and a half and the bottom edge is tight and flush to the outside edge of the panel post. The bottom of the gusset should also be flush with the bottom of the top horizontal. Make sure the beveled side of the gusset is facing out then attach it with three wood screws. Install an arch gusset right in the same manner on the other side of the beam 57 and a half. Then repeat to install an arch gusset left and arch gusset right on the other short side. From inside the pergola, position an arch gusset right so that the top end is tight to the side of a front beam assembly and the bottom edge is tight and flush to the outside edge of the panel post. The bottom of the gusset should also be flush with the bottom of the top horizontal. The beveled side of the gusset must be facing out. Attach it with three wood screws. Install an arch gusset left in the same manner on the other side of the front beam assembly. Then repeat to install an arch gusset right and arch gusset left on the front beam assembly at the other long side of the pergola. Once again, from inside the pergola, position an arch gusset right so that the top end is tight to the side of an inner beam assembly and the bottom edge is tight and flush to the outside edge of the panel post. The bottom of the gusset should also be flush with the bottom of the top horizontal. Attach it with three wood screws. Install an arch gusset left in the same manner on the other side of the inner beam assembly. Then repeat to install an arch gusset right and arch gusset left on the other inner beam assembly. Work on a flat and solid raised surface for step 11. Position a long trellis A and short trellis A so that their notched ends interlock. Attach them with a hex bolt through the top hole. That's the one on the long side of the assembly. Then place trellis clips on each side of the four bottom holes. Attach them with hex bolts, making sure the trellis clips are flush to the bottom of the board. Now connect a long trellis B and short trellis B in the same way. Make sure the notched ends interlock. 
then attach with a hex bolt through the top hole. Once again, place trellis clips on each side of the four bottom holes. Make sure they're flush to the bottom and fasten with hex bolts. Repeat to create three more trellis B assemblies. Position a long trellis C and short trellis C together end to end. Make sure the notched ends interlock, then attach them with a hex bolt through the top hole. Place trellis clips on each side of the four bottom holes and fasten with hex bolts. Now connect the ends of a long trellis D and short trellis D. Add a trellis clip on each side, then attach the boards with a bolt through the bottom hole. Install three more bolts and six trellis clips on the trellis D assembly, making sure they're flush at the bottom. Then repeat to create one more trellis D assembly. For this step, position a ladder just in front of the pergola and right in the middle, and a second one just behind the pergola and also in the middle. With some assistance, place trellis assembly A on top of the four beam assemblies. Use a measuring tape to make sure trellis assembly A is centered on each splice. Once you're sure the trellis clips are centered over each of the beams, attach each one with a pan screw. Lift a trellis assembly B into place so that it's parallel to trellis assembly A and on top of the splice. Make sure the short trellis on assembly B is on the opposite side of the short trellis on assembly A. Use a measuring tape to position trellis assembly B in the correct position. There should be 13 and a half inches between the two assemblies. Attach trellis assembly B with one pan screw per trellis clip. Then install a second trellis assembly B in the same manner on the other side of assembly A. Once again, making sure the short trellis on assembly B is on the opposite side of the one on assembly A. Next, install another trellis assembly B on each side of the two you just installed. Once again, there should be 13 and a half inches between each assembly, and each short trellis should be on the opposite side. Repeat those steps to install a trellis assembly C and trellis assembly D on each side of the pergola. And you should continue to alternate the placement of each trellis short. Measure 7 and 7 8 inches on the long side of a bar gusset and make a mark. Now choose a short side of your pergola to place the bar on and measure 40 and 1 8 of an inch up from the bottom of the panel post. That's where you'll position the top of a bar gusset. Use the mark you made on the gusset as a guide to ensure it overhangs by 7 and 7 8 inches on the outside. Attach the bar gusset with one wood screw, then check to make sure it's level before securing it in place with two more wood screws. Now measure 22 and a half inches up from the bottom of the panel post. That's where you should position the top of a shelf gusset. It should be centered over the post. Once the first screw is in, check to make sure the shelf gusset is level before securing it with two additional wood screws. Repeat to install two more gussets at the same heights on the other panel post. Perform step 13 on a flat and solid raised surface. Place a front back shelf on its edge with the holes at the bottom. Now position a shelf side joist against one end. The front back shelf should overhang the shelf side joist by 5 eighths of an inch. And the holes on the side of the shelf side joist must be positioned this way with the two holes at the top. Make sure it's flush to the side and bottom and centered over the pilot holes. Attach with two wood screws. Attach a second shelf side joist to the other end of the front back shelf in the same manner. Then attach another front back shelf to the end of the two shelf side joists you just installed. Position two shelf joists inside the assembly, centering them over the pilot holes. They should also be flush at the bottom. Attach each one with four wood screws to complete the shelf frame. Place the shelf frame on top of the two lower shelf gussets installed in step 12. 
If the space is too tight, remove the screws in the arch gusset left and arch gusset right just above the opening and push the posts at the base to widen the space. Once the shelf is in place, pull the posts together and reattach with screws. Use a measuring tape to make sure the outside edge of the shelf frame overhangs the gussets by 5 eighths of an inch. Attach the shelf frame with six wood screws. Place two shelf tops onto the shelf frame and between the two front back shelves. Attach them to the joists underneath with eight wood screws each. It's important to perform this step on a raised surface that is flat and solid. Measure 18 inches from the end of a bar back. That's where you'll position the outside edge of a side joist. Make sure it's flush to the side and bottom of the bar back. The bar back should overhang the side joist by 5 eighths of an inch and the holes on the side of the side joist must be positioned in this way with the two holes on top. Attach it with two wood screws. Then attach a second side joist in the same manner at the other end of the bar back, once again measuring 18 inches in from the end. Now position two joists between the side joists you just installed. Use the pilot holes as a guide for placing them. The joists should be 16 and a half inches apart. Attach them with two wood screws each. Next, attach a front back shelf on the ends of the four joists. Make sure each end of the front back shelf is flush to the side of the side joists. The holes should be positioned at the bottom and there's a 5 eighth of an inch overhang at the top of the front back shelf. Attach it with eight wood screws to complete the bar frame. Place the bar frame onto the top bar gussets. Make sure the bar back is inside the pergola and the front back shelf is on the outside. The bar frame should overhang on both sides by 5 eighths of an inch. When it's in position, attach it to each of the panel posts with three wood screws. Place an end joist against the inside of the rail TB right next to where you're installing the bar frame. Make sure it's flush to the bottom and the top is 5 eighths of an inch from the top of the bar back. Install the end joist with three wood screws. Install a second end joist in the same manner on the other corner post assembly. Then attach the bar back to the end of each end joist with two wood screws. To secure the shelf frame, attach each shelf gusset to the shelf side joist. You can do that by inserting wood screws into the pilot holes underneath each side of the shelf gusset. The bar frame can be secured in a similar manner by inserting wood screws into the pilot holes underneath each side of the bar gusset. Position a bar right so that one end is tight to the corner post and flush to the top of the rail TV. The other end of the bar right should be flush and tight to the end of the side joist and front back shelf. Secure it first to the corner post with two wood screws and then to the side joist. Repeat each step to install the bar left, once again making sure it's flush to the top of the rail TB. Position the short bar top on the outer edge of the bar frame so that it's tight to the front back shelf. Next, place the mid bar top next to the short bar top so that the notches fit around the corner panel post. Now position the long bar top in the remaining space on the bar frame. It should be flush to the bar back. When all three boards are in place, attach each with 12 wood screws. With some assistance, unfold the canopy at ground level. That will make it easier as you lift it into position on top of the pergola. Using ladders and at least one helper, drape the canopy over the trellises. Use a measuring tape to make sure the canopy is centered. Then screw a male snap into trellis A where the edge of the canopy sits. Connect the center female snap on the canopy. 
Then repeat to fasten the other side of the canopy to trellis A. Now from inside the pergola, attach the canopy further by wrapping each of the Velcro straps around trellis A. When you're done, pull the canopy tight on one side of the pergola. Use the female snaps as a guide and install male snaps at matching intervals along the beam end assembly. When you're done, snap the female snaps into place and repeat to secure the other side of the canopy.